Okay, so everybody, good afternoon. My name is Indica, and uh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Seed to Germinate. Thank you. I want to shout out a very large thank you to Brandon, Bruce, Pat, Nathan, Douglas, Tim, Ryan, and everyone that helped with this event. Since the name of the event is Seed to Germinate, I thought that it was most appropriate for me to talk about the symbolism of the seed of life and what it truly represents. I'm only going to give the very basic information to help plant the seed. The rest is up to you. The information I will be speaking about today was not taught to me by my parents, my teachers, or any religion. Also, anything that I talk about is only my contention by what I have researched. I used an eclectic array of sources and came up with these conclusions on my own. I do not claim them to be factual. It is up to everyone to be their own investigator and live by what you think is right and strive to have the guts to look into the truth no matter how much you think you all know it. It is important to note that almost everything I learned up to the age of 20 was a bunch of misleading lies. Methods of manipulation were used on all of us by mind control using television to provide programming and selling us ideas, products, ways to look, act and think instead of being encouraged to use imagination and creativity to form our own thoughts. Using fear to control thoughts, emotions, and actions on a daily basis, using scare tactics such as if you don't act a certain way and think and be who we think you should be, you will go to hell and suffer worse than your greatest nightmare. This is total control. So let me see a raise of hands. Has anybody ever experienced this type of treatment? So I'd like to start out by saying um, and showing this image. And I would read this, but I'm sure that you probably already have, but um, the seed of life pattern, hold on here, I'm trying to go backwards. The seed of life pattern is made of seven interlocking circles. Some beliefs uh, see these seven circles as the seven days in which God created life. First, one circle was created, and on each after, another circle was added. Once all seven circles were formed, the seed of life was born. And from this shape, the flower of life, which is basically like the seed of life, but with another layer of circles around the outside is built, which contains the blueprint of the universe. Therefore, all that exists can be built from the seed of life. The oldest version of this can be seen in the temple of Osiris. The seed of life is formed from a relationship of six circles around one. In fact, six circles will always fit exactly around a seventh circle of the same size. Each circle fits into this pattern like a lock and key, forming a dynamic field of possible geometric, I'm sorry, geometric relationships, which reveal the most fundamental shapes of creation. Okay, so... I would like to start out today showing you this image here. And when you were young and didn't know yet how babies were made, they decided to spoon feed you this image when you saw an image of a baby. You may say, what does a stork have to do with mind control? Well, you know the story about how the stork brings the baby back to mommy, right? Do you ever wonder why they really did this? Here on the right is a movie actually targeted for children. And you can see that the baby is in the wrap. Notice the association between the image of a stork and the image of the word egg. If you were seven years old, you might think of an egg coming from a stork because they lay eggs, right? Most children would, and that's what they have programmed children at a very young age to believe that they came from an egg. As you can see, now the stork has an egg instead of a baby. Egg, baby, baby, egg. What is this? Most people think they came from their mother's egg. And the programmers wanted to stay that way. 
but how connected with nature would you be if you looked at this image and knew you came from a seed? What do you think about when you hear the word seed? Maybe sunflower seeds or corn seeds? Do you think about this image below as a seed? Or as you? Did you know that the image are actually the size of a seed from a female is about the size of a grain of sand? So what are we talking about today? Today I'm going to talk to you about the magic and divine spark and discuss the different stages that create the seed of life. My goal is to maybe create enough interest to see the connection of this symbol with nature and humans and how it teaches us about the divine spark of creation. Notice the similarities between the geometric symbol on the left corresponding to the growing embryo of a human being on the right. This is the first stage, a spherical octahot, is it oct? Yeah, thank you. Notice the triangle pyramid centroid in the middle inside of this sphere. So you can see the sphere, how it connects or corresponds to the actual cell of an embryo. And down in the left-hand corner, you can see the pyramid that is inside, or the, the triangle is inside of the sphere. And over here, you can see also, there's the gavel. So that's all inside of that, right to the left. These are the actual days in order from the seed of life to the seven days of creation. So you can see day one, day two, day three, day four. This is actually how cells look. The second stage is Vesica Pisces. You can see that the fish symbol is right there. And um, it was once used by Christians to identify each other during the persecution period. It does not take a great deal of imagination to link the fisher of men in the context of symbology. It can be easily seen how the symbol of the fish may originate in geometry concealed within the example of Christian iconic, I'm sorry, the Vest of Capisces self-reflected creation. Consciousness knows itself, and in knowing itself, reflecting upon itself, what is called a vesica Pisces is actually created. And in that intersection of the reflection of the consciousness is created a different density of consciousness, and that different density is what you call energy, and in that energy is the vibration. That is representative of the intention of the consciousness reflecting on itself. It's a self-reflected creation. And that is a quote by Bashar. Um, this is the activation of the third strand DNA, the etheric intersection, which is in the middle. You can see the middle. And then on the right, you can actually see the actual cells separating. And it creates the same symbol as Pisces, where the cells are separating. And you can see the space in the middle if you look hard enough. And this actually shows uh, the triangle in the middle there and how this symbol is actually the next part of the Pisces, okay? And that's how that works. This is the third stage, the equilateral triangle corresponding to a third day old embryo that's the image on the right. This is an actual embryo on the right. Look at the image on the left. You can see how they correspond, and that's the whole goal here today is just to see the correspondence of how each symbol is corresponding to an actual cell. This is the fourth stage, which is a pentagon you can see the X in the middle on the left. This corresponds to a four-day-old 
embryo image on the right. So this is all teaching us about the cycle of life. That's what the seed of life represents. I don't know why it keeps doing that, but it does. The fifth stage pentagram on the left is spirit, air, earth, fire, and water. So basically what happens here is um, it actually fits inside of a circle, and a circle is a symbol of infinity. And because the line never ends or comes to a point, the universe is infinite. A circle is also a symbol of the meaning of the universe because it is something infinite that can be grasped or, or seen with our eyes. The fact that the five points of a pentagon fit within a circle suggests a pentagon, I'm sorry, that is an explanation of the meaning of the universe. The upright pentagram, it's not inverted, is a symbol of the spiritual man with the five limbs to the right and sensory organs that are represented by the symbolism of the five-pointed pentagram. The golden ratio is symbolized by the ratios of the line segments, which is in the middle. So it shows five for the human body and the number of five in the pentagram symbolizes the five senses of the man, the five ele elements of nature, the five extremities of the human body. And what it does is within its own soul, within our own soul, man not only masters and governs all creatures inferior to himself, but may demand consideration at the hands of those superior to himself. So that is the pentagram. And you can see that the corresponding to the five-day-old embryo image on the right. This is the sixth stage, which is um, the hexagram. I'm sorry, the hexagon. Sorry about that. In the center of the Star of David, actually, it's showing the Star of David. It is the sacred geometry formed by the interlocking of two triangles. The upward pointing triangle representing positive male energy and the downward facing triangle representing negative female energy. And then you can see the six day old embryo image on the right. This is actually the uh, seven days of creation, the seed of life that you see right there. This is actually uh, the day of rest. So you can actually see the, 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 the triangles within the, the seed of life on the left, inverted and upward. And then, of course, the corresponding cell coming to the time where it's the day of rest for the cells to actually go into a human being. And this is just another corresponding picture of what we just saw. So it's all about showing the correspondence. So I wanted to show you this because this is a flower. And this is the stage of a flower's life going for, from fertilization. And what's very important to understand about this, too, is that this flower has the same reproductive organs as a female human being. So why is that? Why does a plant have the same reproduction cycle and look the same? And it's got, you know, ovaries. It's got everything about it almost identical to a woman. So maybe that's why women like flowers. I don't know, but uh, um, it's, it's very, very, very similar how it, how it all works together. So comparing plant and human reproductive systems, look on the left with a plant, look on the right. The reproductive systems are almost identical. You know, one is one over here is pollen, one is sperm over here. And that's pretty much very, very interesting to me how they we have the same reproductive systems as a plant. Right? 
So I thought this was very interesting. Um, flowers, this is an actual orchid. It seems to me that these flowers are connected to birds. Looks like a bird to me, right? This is another orchid. See, it has a face on it. And it looks like a monkey. So I guess flowers are connected to monkeys, too. And you can see that these orchids are connected to humans. They have little arms and legs. And they have little faces. So the highest form of ignorance is when you reject something you don't know anything about. Wayne Dyer. The seed of life teaches everything is connected. Thank you very much.